Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Real Estate Sales Secrets. You know, today's interview, uh, we have a really special guest that I've known for a couple of years. We've talked, we've chatted, um, and uh, I think she grew, he grew up with my wife, which would be an interesting backstory as well, and has known her forever. Um, we may have to have more discussions of that uh, over beers at a bar sometime, but uh, <laughs> so one of the, the, the two subjects today, one, how to succeed without going broke in real estate sales, and two, if you've lost everything in, that you had, your database, your, uh, your systems, everything that you had, you had 30 days to survive and find a way to get it all back and put food on your table, what would you do? So our guest today is Jason Shinpaw. You know, Jason is a well-known expert on subject real estate sales and uh, also has a mortgage business as, as well and has graciously consented to this interview to share with us uh, his insight into answering those questions and really how to succeed without going broke, which I think all of us uh, would like to know. So Jason, thank you again for joining us on the live interview. Let's jump My in. My pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for thinking of me. Absolutely. And we're going to go ahead and pass on that conversation with Janie because <laughs> it would be a a two-way street and we're, so we're going to pass on that and I'm going to tell you she's awesome so we're going to leave it at that make sure you let her know I said that that's right you got it I'll do that I think I would suffer more consequential than she would so <laughs> you know she is a very patient woman <laughs> she, she's so put up with me for a long we're, time we're going to leave that as a matter of fact I recorded that a little bit I'm going to text her that little piece that I just said perfect awesome. perfect just so that way uh, <laughs> You've got it. Well, hey, so the first set of questions is basically background and experience. Give everybody just an, an understanding of who you are, where you're coming from, how you can relate. So when did you get started in real estate and how? So I have been uh, selling real estate for over 20 years now, which is hard to even fathom. And uh, I got into it when I didn't know what else I wanted to do in my life, you know, and I was going to go back to school and a uh, nice lady recruited me. She's like, you should come sell real estate. I'm like, I'm not a salesperson. She's like, oh no, you're a salesperson. You would do very, you would do very well in this industry. Um, so I, you know, I, I explored it. It was a great time in my life. I was bartending at the time and, you know, I didn't have a bunch of debt. I didn't have a bunch of responsibilities. So it was, it was very easy for me to transition into that. Um, you know, worked for a, a local independent broker here in Merritt Island, then ultimately went to a franchise, then opened my own business, then the market crashed, you know, and I just went into um, survival mode, survived through the through the downturn, and then, you know, the, the big sexy term of, hey, let's build a team, let's build a team, let's build a team. I've, I've got all the t-shirts for that, small, medium, large, extra large, and as you know, I'm not exactly either of those sizes. Um, <laughs> So uh, I, uh, you know, I, I've, I've been through all of that stuff and, you know, we did a lot of stuff right and we did a lot of stuff not right. And I, and I think the, at the end of the day, one of the, the greatest lessons I've learned in this is, has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but it is a sidebar. And I think it's super important for anybody listening to this. There is a lot of not accurate information in the real estate space right now. Yeah. And when, when you're out and going to these events and, you know, you name it, like you can go down the list and, and you sit there and listen, you're like, that's not how you run your business. That's not who your business is when you go home. Um, and I really struggled with that because I, I, I found myself in a place of, you know, trying to build an Apple business because an Apple business is what was presented and it was really an orange business. So I could never really catch the Apple because it didn't exist. And so I was trying to duplicate systems and, and things that, that weren't, it, it's not that they weren't necessarily not being used, but they weren't being used all the way at the same way at the same level. And, and so, so it was just, it was a big race, you know, and I think the, the team structure has been, um, you know, everybody's pushing on the teams and pushing on the teams and pushing on the teams. And it would made a huge mistake in our, in our business. We became very legalistic. We said, you're a square peg in our square hole or you don't fit. And uh, I had some great ovals walk out of our world. I had some great circles walk out of our world. I had some great triangles walk out of our world. Um, and that's just part of learning. You know, it's part of becoming a better leader. And, and I, I will certainly accept the responsibility for that. But I also think that we got a lot of information that was, you know, 
we were chasing squares and not everybody had squares. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, let, let's stay here for a second then because, you know, there, there's everybody always wants to talk about the right personality profiles for a certain position and the right disc test and the right this and a buyer's agent's a buyer's agent and a listing agent's a listing agent. And, you know, I think so many, that's, that's, I mean, the, the huge push for teams, not everybody's going that way and nor do they have to. So talk about that. I mean, it's, it's not everybody has to do it and be on a team to succeed. So, you know, there, there is absolutely pros and cons to, to, to any of it. The, the, the problem with, with the real estate industry as a whole is most people are not willing to put the time, effort, energy, and resources into becoming the, the true professional that, that it takes. Yeah. And it takes a lot. It's not easy. You know, we, we, we were interviewing tons of people. And I mean, we had stacks of resumes and, uh, you know, I, I quote, uh, equate it to a, a puppy mill, right? We were like a puppy mill for hiring. And it was, we had people coming in and droves. We we're doing group interviews and, you know, it, like we had this whole, whole thing and, you know, we kind of lost track of, do I like you? And do you like me? Yes. Right. That, that, that's, that's one component of it. But, but the other component of it is, you know, a lot of people get into real estate when they failed at everything else. Right. And so it, it, it let's just be honest. It's what it is. Right. I mean, it's, it's got a pretty low barrier of entry and you know, much like me 20 years ago, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I'm like, give me a real estate license. And, and I, and I think that's a real big enemy for our industry as a whole. And so, you know, you, you, you think to the, you, you've been through this, the hiring and stuff like that. And you, you get people that come in and, you know, they said, Oh, well, I was the night manager at the local fast food restaurant and I got moved up to be the head biscuit maker and, and I took the morning shift and I like real estate. I like looking at houses and my mom says I'll be good at it. And that's why I'll be great at selling real estate. You know? And it's like, well, what, what does that have to do with anything? And so it's, it's a really, it's a really hard place to be because I believe in, in the real estate world, as we know it today, it has changed so much. And, and a lot of it has changed based on the barrier for entry to get in. Yeah. So what do you mean? How's it's, it it's, you, you go take a fifth, you know, in Florida, what is it? 60 hours now, yeah. 60 hours sales test. Yeah. Um, it, it has no bearing on whether you'll be a great real estate agent or not. It has a bearing. Can you, afford to take the test, afford to take the class where they make their money and yep. kick pass it. It, it. So it, it doesn't mean that you're any more knowledgeable about selling real estate. It doesn't mean you're any more knowledgeable about sales. It doesn't mean any of those things. And I've been very blessed to be able to, to stick it out long enough to understand what it's really about, you know, and, and our industry it is, is really just about serving people and relationships at the end of the day. Perfect. So, well, you know, that kind of brings us down to the first question then and great lead into that. So you suddenly lose everything. You have 30 days to get it back. You've got your kids. You've got your wife. You've got everything that, you know, you've got 30 days to, to get it and to put food back on the table. So what's the first thing that you'd do? Well, I, w I would get super deep with my sphere of influence. I mean, period end of story. I, I would not, uh, there's a great book, never eat alone. And I, and I, I subscribe, I've never read the book, but it's, it's for a lot of people that don't understand that concept. It's a great book to read. Um, and you know, basically I think back to my entire professional career has been built on relationships. You know, I had a client appreciation party yesterday. Uh, well over a hundred people showed up. They come every year. They're there that, you know, and so I, I, I really, um, I really value the, the sphere of influence and the referrals. And so, you know, this is probably not in the order in which you want to go, but this is the perfect time to talk about this. So one of the greatest mistakes that I made in my entire professional career is not taking care of my SOI list. When I started, I had the note cards, the three by five note cards and, you know, and the ABC and they didn't have all this stuff. And I just did a really, really bad job of not taking care of my SOI. And I, I've, I still just last week, Linda and I were talking about, we need to get our list organized again. I bet you I've been through that list 381 times. 
And there's still people not on there that should be on there. There's people on there that shouldn't be on there. And, it, you know, it just, it wears on you. But, but what I did do is I, I got sideways with all the lead gen that's out there, right? I had a full ISA team. I had, I, I mean, at one point I was spending 180 grand a year on lead gen. Yeah. In, in some people's market, that's not much. In our market, that's a lot, right? And I was spending about $180 on my SOI per year. Not really, but but relatively speaking, and seventy five percent of my business is coming from referrals and SOI and past clients, and you know, and I'm like, what am I doing? You know, and and my wife was up and down me about it, and I'm like, no, we just got to keep getting more leads. And what I can assure you, above everything on this planet, more leads are not better. Spot on, <laughs> spot on. Well, wait a so, minute. That's what that's what Zillow and Trulia and everybody else wants us to think. <laughs> it is, it, and so that's you know you you ask for my opinion, and it's nothing more than that my opinion. But I can assure you, I have not spent one dollar on any sort of external lead generation that does not revolve around my SOI in years. But it stopped. So what's the best way for them to take a first step of doing this and, and go, go in two different directions. One, if they are from the area and do have a built in sphere of influence and one, if they don't, you know, if they don't, because I, I know when I started, I didn't have one. I just moved to the area. So how would you, how would you start? So I, I actually think that's a, that, that in some respects can be a better place to be when you're not from the area because you, you're not typically as lazy about it as you are when you're from the area. So when you're from the area, you go, oh, Susie would use me, Johnny wouldn't, so I'm going to put her, I'm not going to put her, and I'm going to put him. And, you know, and every person that you know should be on your SOI list unless they tell you otherwise. And they'll tell you. After you start touching them and communicating with them, they'll tell you they don't want to be on that list. And that's just fine, too. But, you know, the, the hardest part that people in, in real estate is you hear it all the time, like, I don't want them to think I'm a salesperson. Well, guess what? You're a salesperson. That's what we do for a living. We sell things. But just because we're a salesperson doesn't mean we have to be a cheese ball, slime bucket, take advantage of people. That's not what it means. People are going to buy a house. They're either going to buy it with you, Rob, or they're not. Now, I know that if they choose me, that we're going to handle them with white kit gloves and we're going to serve them at the highest level. If they will walk down the street, I don't know what they may or may not get. And there's lots of great realtors out there and there's lots of not great realtors out there. There's lots of great pastors out there. There's lots of not great pastors. Out there. I mean, that, that applies to everything. So that's not an industry negative. It's just the facts. So I take the mindset of if I stay in touch with them and they decide they want to buy or sell a house or they want to rent a property or whatever they need to do with real estate. If they, if they call me, they are going to be served at a super duper high level. So that supersedes the whole, I don't want to be a salesperson. Well, they're going to hire a salesperson. Yeah. Promise you. They are. When they raise their hand, say, I'm going to buy a house, they're going to hire a salesperson. How would, right? you approach, how would you approach them? I would approach it from the standpoint of how are you? How is life? What's happening in your world? You know, it, you, you can go in my phone and I literally saw, so I, I have this commitment to myself that every time I think of someone, I send them a text message. And it's just a simple, I had you on my mind. How are you? I hope all is well, whatever. And that's personal, professional. That's any of the professional groups I'm a part of. Um, you know, and so my number one God-given gift is I'm a connector. And, and, I, and I connect people. As you know, we travel all over the country. We travel full time. And I meet people all over the place. And they're always like, you should come see us. I'm like, listen, don't invite us if you don't want us to come <laughs> because we will come. Yep. Right. And, and it's, and, and I literally, it, it's what I do, but, but I also do that with our, with our SOI and, and it's a very simple thing to do. So if you have an app and I'm sure Android does the same thing, you just simply save your SOI list as in, in the notes, put SOI. Right. And so you could, you could do it a few different ways. You could pick two letters of the, if you want to be this formal about it, you could put two letters, A and B, B and C, you know, C and D, and, and touch them each quarter. It's, you would touch every person on your list four times per year with a message, a call, whatever. But just save them in your phone with the SOI 
in there somewhere and then search SOI and then it'll pull them all up alphabetically and then you can go through that list and text them or call them or email them. But it has to be genuine. It, it, it has to be who you are, right? You, you can't call them every, you know, the old, we won't say the name scripts. You just call them and pound them for business, right? That's not what it's about. It's about building sincere relationships. This is a relationship business. And, you know, I, I haven't lived in our community in three and a half years. Okay. And we still have a great business here. Right. And I still have people who call me every week. Like I want to sell my house. It, like there's nobody else they're calling. And I've worked super hard for that, but they know that we're going to take care of them at the highest level. And that's what it's all about. So having that list, number one, is, is a super important part of it. Number two, not deciding who should or shouldn't be on there. Now listen, I don't think that you should go out and put all your realtor buddies on there. I don't think that that's really pertinent. You're wasting uh, postage and things like that. But really creating a list, organizing the list, and then maintaining that list. Every deal that closes, making sure you put their new address on there. You know, every piece of data you can get is spectacular. So at our client appreciation party yesterday, we had people showing up like, Hey, we don't have this for you. And, and they'll give you it. They're happy to give it to you. Yeah. So that, that to me with the SOI and, and then just being genuine, some of them, some of them you may not want to have coffee with and that's okay. You can just call and say, Hey, I was thinking about you. And they will always ask, how are you? And you go, I'm great. I'm selling real estate now. I don't know if you knew that or not, but we're selling real estate. I've joined this great team. I've joined this great company. Things are really, really moving along. And, uh, you know, if, if you happen to think of anybody, would you do me a favor and keep me in mind? There's nothing salesy about that. Yeah, right? Not at all. Not at all. But, you, but people have in their mindset, sorry, that people have in their mind that if they call, they have to call to sell them something. Yeah. And, and you have to really – you know that you, you you've all you've heard the ABC of sales, right? Which is what? Always be closing. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's not what it is. No. What should it be? <laughs> always be communicating. Always being building a relationship. <laughs> always be connecting. Yep, connecting. What it should like be. That. Yep. It, that, that's what the ABC should be. Always be connecting. So. I like it. Very good. So you mentioned something about groups and things like that. Are, are, do you find those valuable? Uh, building a business? Quite frankly, I, I really don't. Uh, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that happens as groups. Most people don't know about a lot of people that run those groups are paid to promote all sorts of things. Yep. And I, and I think you see a significant amount of people chasing shiny squirrels because so-and-so said, Oh, we're using fill in the blank. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they're being paid or they're getting the service for free or, you know, so, so I, 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 that goes back to one of the very first topics we had. There's a lot of not real information out there. And I don't think that a lot of those people do a great job of disclosing they're being compensated for this. And Hey, I'm all for it. Right. You know, no, no harm, no foul, but, but I think there's a, there's a significant amount of misleading that happens in that. And I just, it, there's too much data out there and too much information in all facets. And I think that everybody has been looking for the silver bullet in real estate and they've, they've gone from these huge CRMs to uh, automation and now AI and, you know, all of these things. And at the end of the day, it's still a people business. It's still a relationship business. And no matter what happens, no matter what happens with what company, no matter what happens with AI, no matter what happens with any of those things, there's still more than enough people that will not use those and be a part of that, that you can have a great business. It, it is having an impact. There's no doubt. We, we would be foolish to not acknowledge that. But it, it's, not going to, it's not going to put you out of business so long as you continue to build great relationships. Yeah. You got it. You know, I've never, I've never had an invitation from Zillow or an AI company to go sit down and have a cup of coffee and talk about my family. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the truth. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, we want to complicate this stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like you, you sit here and you want to like make it something, you know, it sound really cool and intelligent. And it's like, you know, what's intelligent? Serve people. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what's intelligent. 
love on them like they've never been loved on. And th that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Spot on. Be Spot lucky on. for you. I'm a simpleton. So I don't have a whole bunch of complex things to talk about. <laughs> well, you know, it, 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 and that's good right I, here in this book. This is it. This is, this is all I got. I yeah. like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so that was awesome. So what would be the second thing that you do? Open houses. I, I would go to somebody in your, in your world. If you don't have any listings, I would go to somebody and I would do an open house for 30 days straight in the same neighborhood. What would that do? How would you do it? Well, I would, you know, of course do the mega open houses with tons of signs and, you know, at one point we had a hot dog cart at our open houses. We had, I mean, it looked like a carnival happening and you know, it's, it's a number one, it's a great way to show a seller that you're working for them. Yeah. Right. It's a, it's a, gr it's tangible. You can see it, right. You, you can see the effort that went into it. Number two, so can all the other sellers in the neighborhood. Right. Yeah. So for every seller, the, every listing you have, you should generate one and a half buyers off of it. So, so basically every deal is two and a half deals. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So to, 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 not take advantage of doing open houses and not take advantage of doing big open houses. And it, it takes some effort. So right? go, through, go through that a little bit. What do you mean by the mega, the big open? I house? mean, we put out, we put out a hundred, 150 signs for an open house flags, go door knocking. It's a wonderful opportunity to go door knocking in a non -solicit solicitation neighborhood. Do you know why? You're because not you're not you're not selling anything. You're inviting them to your open house. Yeah. Now, look, you don't need to go door knocking every day, but if it's a big enough neighborhood, one day you can go that way, one day you go that way, one day you go that way, one day you go that way. So, so you get to, to door knock and they'll start seeing your stuff there. And so everybody goes, you know, I had some conversation with this guy not long back. He's like, I do anything to get my business successful. I was like, really? He's like, I was like, we'll do an open house every day for 30 days. <laughs> what do you say? Oh no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I can't buy the signs. I'm like, I'll buy the signs for you. It, it's not even, this isn't even somebody in my world. I have nothing yeah. from it. Right. I'm yeah. like, I'll buy you the signs. Yeah. He's like, at least he owned it and said he wouldn't do it. Yeah. He yeah. went from, I do anything. And I was proud of him because he's finally like, cause there, I'm not going to take no, I, I, you, there's not one objection that you could give me that I couldn't handle. Yeah. So the, the, the reality is you're not willing to do everything that it takes to make your business successful. Yeah. That's the reality. Yeah. Well, and some people may have heard that, you know, 100, 150 signs. There are plenty of places online where you can go get double-sided colored open house signs, you know, 100 of them for 100 bucks. Well, and, you know, the, the other part of that is you, you can, you, and one of the things I think that's very important part of your business is to have a great partner you know, a great lending partner and, and don't be flipping around and don't say, Oh, I got to give out three. And I don't, like, that's nonsense. That's rubbish. You need to have partners. You need to have people that will help you with their business, you help you with your business. And then you help them with their business. Right? So if, if you have a partner and you say, Hey, I'd like to do these open house signs. I don't expect you to show up at every open house. You're not going to, but, but it'd be great if you help me make some flyers and this and that they're going to do it and yeah. you're going to have a great partner and then they get the business and then they want to help you more. And so it, that's how you grow your business. As you, as you grow it, you, you, you take control of your business and you grow your business. But, but most people aren't willing to do that. Dude, I can assure you when, when I was in the throes of production, I was not the best realtor from the standpoint of the eyes and the T's of the contract. I can assure you that. I knew it. And obviously I'm a broker. I mean, I, I, I know, but, but at the end of the day, I was willing to out hustle everybody. There you go. Well, and if somebody is limited on funds or has zero funds, then that's what you've got. That's your, that's your sweat equity. That's right. Yeah. And so, so the second part of that is, you know, depending on whether you're part of a team or a part of a, a, a company, do people have thousands of leads laying around that nobody's touching? I was just talking to somebody not long ago. They have 40,000 leads in their database, right? Like, so when, when do you call this? We, we don't, there's nobody to call them. So you go to your open house, 
And while you're there, you get somebody to give you access to their database for free. Yeah. And work out if, if it's if it's not part of a team and you're so I'll give you a referral fee. May I use your, may I call through your database? Right? And while you're sitting at the open house, call through that database. Yeah. Yeah. It's free. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you know, it's funny, I was I was talking to um, another agent the other day and and he actually showed me his database because he just put it into a new one. He's got thirty-eight thousand. Uh, 13,800 of the leads are classified as new leads. <laughs> yeah, said, that happened last month, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I said, how, 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 do, what, how do you keep up with 13,800 leads? We don't. But I'm going to generate 400 more this month. Yes, exactly. But I'm going to spend another $10,000 this month to generate more leads. Yeah, that spot on. That's You've had the same question, same conversation, haven't you? No, I, no, because I haven't spent anything. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So let me. Get you, so, so many people hear that open houses don't work. You know, they hear it around the office. They hear it from the agents that have been in business for so long, and so they get stuck in doing it. How do they get unstuck on on getting over that hurdle of doing it? Just go do it. It, it, it. It's it's literally, and listen, if you can't do it for 30 days, I'm going to do it five days a week for a month, right? Yeah. If I, I respect, like, if, it, but if you really want to win, you got to work harder than anybody else. This, this skill comes down the road. In the beginning, you just got to work harder than everybody else. Nice, nice. Right? You got it, absolutely. So let's go to number three. Hold on. Let's, let's go back to the open house. All right, go. All right. So, so, so let, let's just, let's just play with some marginal numbers. All right. Okay. And I'm talking like super simple because I can do them in my head. All right. Yep. So, so let's say that the, the average sales price in, in some, um, in a market mm -hmm. is 250,000. All right. All right. And we'll say that the average commission is two and a half percent. And here I said, I could do this in my math and I can't do this in my head. So, uh, uh, any phone here. So I want to make sure I do the, the numbers. 60, correctly. 6250. All right. 6250. Yep. All right. So let's say you're on a 50, 50 split. All right. All right. So what's that? Half of that. That would be 3125. Hey, by the way, I'm hiring assistants if you're looking. Like, I like somebody that's right there with you me. You like that? Do <laughs> do, do the, do the, hey, I will do this all day for you. <laughs> okay. So, so 3125, that, that's, that's the, the value of that. Yep. All right. If, if, you, if you sell a house. Now, yep. we've already said that you should get one and a half buyers for every open house, for every listing that you have. Okay. So if you were to go to a neighborhood and do an open house, let, let's say you're there for two hours, okay. you spend an hour setting up and an hour tearing down, which, which would not be, but, but we're just going to say, so that's four hours. Okay. Okay. And we're going to say you just do it five days a week. Let's not get overzealous. All right. That's 20 hours. Okay. And we're going to do that times four weeks. Okay. Okay. So for, for argument's sake, Let's say that we attract one listing in that neighborhood. Okay. And we get one and a half buyers off of it. All right. So that's 2.5 deals. Okay. So. Now how many hours did we work? 80. 80. All right, so I have a sneaking suspicion uh -huh. that if you were to go out into our society and say, if I paid you $100 an hour, would you come to work for me? What do you think they would say? I'm thinking that we would have no shortage of people fighting to get that opportunity. Okay, so it, it would break out to $97.65 an hour. Yep. If you did four hours, five days a week, and you sold two and a half houses. Yep. Now, 
do you really think that you would only sell two and a half houses? Because aside from your SOI, what's the best lead? Somebody that's in the driveway. In the driveway. Not in their underwear looking at Zillow in Missouri because it's snowing. That's right. That's right. right? Yep. So yeah. you're, you're, I, I would love to see somebody take this and do it because the, the, the numbers would be far more than this. They would be. As a matter of fact, here, here would be my prediction. I bet you don't get past week two, maybe even 10 days, because you're too busy after that. And, and, I, and I would say that you're, you, you, you should never be too busy to do this, especially for the first six months. Just do it for six months. Yeah. Yeah. And it will set your business up if you have your SOI list and then you're following up with those people. And, you know, the, my, my thing is every single day you have to make sure you do activities and make sure you have business tomorrow. Yes. And every single day you have to make sure you do business activities for your business today, i.e. follow up and prospecting. Spot on. Spot on. I think you just solved our uh, unemployment um, issue as well, because all of the ones that want to go get jobs, I think are going to come and, and start calling you now. I'm going to put this on the regular news. So, so the interesting <laughs> part about that is, right, you know, so let, let's talk about the mindset because that's an important part of this whole process. Yeah. And so nobody, nobody does this because they want to fail. Right. right. Everybody wants to, to do, to do this and to do great with it to do, I mean, everybody does. And, and, and that's awesome. The problem is in order to do that, you have to do some activities that you probably haven't done before or not or make you uncomfortable. And so like, I, I always say, Rob, if, if, if you had a closing today for $250,000 and, and you had a buyer that you worked with for three months, would you miss the closing? No. Horses couldn't drag you out of going to that closing, right? Yep. What if it lasted two hours? Would you be on Facebook? Would you be calling your wife? Would you, no, you would be there engaged with those people for two hours. That's right. What if you had another one tomorrow? Would you make that one too? Yep. And the answer is, of course I would, right? Well, why can't you take the same two hours and prospect? Because that's when you all of a sudden you have to take the dog to the, get their nails done. Yes. And you, you, you stubbed your toe, so you, you've got to take two ibuprofen. That takes an hour. And you, you know, whatever. And the, and the list just grows because you're not willing to do those things because it makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's, that's the, the, the crux of our industry. Some people get lucky enough to do it long enough that they get a business, but most people don't. And that's why you see the attrition rate so high. Yeah. And this stuff is not rocket science, right? I mean, it's just not, yeah. but most people are just not willing to do that work because it's delayed gratification. So they say, I would rather go work at, and, and I always use the DMV. I was just there last week and in Brevard County, they do a great job. So I'm not knocking the people that work there, but, but for, for all intents and purposes, they deal with some pretty unpleasant people who come into the DMV, right? Absolutely. There's a pretty good chance. You're always making two trips there. You forgot your DNA swath or something. I mean, like, you know, you get there, you're like, Oh, how did I not know I needed that? You know, like, well, it's on the website. <laughs> uh, I'll be back and I'll schedule another appointment in six months. So, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but they deal with that and they're, they're told when they can have a break, when they can go to lunch, how much time that they can have off. And at the end of the day, how much they're worth. Yeah. Right. And, but it, it's a, it, it, they have benefits and, and it's consistent and safe and they're, they have job security. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I would bet you if they quit going to work, they will quit getting paid at some point. True. Fair? Very true. Yes. All right. All right. So wouldn't you call that commission? Absolutely. What I call Yeah. I don't go to work. I don't get paid. That's so any job. Pretty much every job on the planet is a commission-based job. Yeah, absolutely. The only difference is my commission-based job, I get to determine what I'm worth. Yeah. Well, what you just did and outlined the open house plan, if you just use those numbers, you're talking about $94,000 a year as an income, which is and a that's whole lot different. 20 hours a week. Yeah, that's a whole <laughs> lot different than um, $12, $15 at the DMV. And it's also almost three times the national average for a real estate agent. Correct. 
and and I want to be really clear. Like I appreciate those people serving our community. Like it's not a, it's not a dig on them. It's it's just something we've all been to the DMV and we see the people that they deal with. Yeah. Right. So so that's really more what it is. It, it it's it's not that they're not valuable. I mean, like I'm super thankful they're there. And man, we had the best experience yes. you ever had the other day. So you know that that part of it's not about that. It's just about sometimes you have to identify something in your mind to to, to be able to go well. Yeah, I mean, you, you could take that out and you could put in the Space Center. You know, everybody had really secure jobs here at the Space Center until the economy tanked. We got a new president and they rolled up the space program. Yeah. Well, I mean, we lost 7,500 secure jobs that have never been lost. Yeah. Well, and, and the whole area suffered for that. You know, we both saw Dearly. It, so, yeah. Dearly. Luckily, so, it's coming back. And it is, but but my point is there there's nothing that's secure. I'll take I'll take gambling on me, yeah, any day. Absolutely. Well, you you are in complete control of what you do. Correct. Success, failure, everything. It is all on you. And I'm I'm in control if I'm willing to do the activities it takes to be successful tomorrow, yeah. and to do the activities it takes to be successful today. Yeah. Which is why you are able to travel around the country and see and do what you want to do and have the lifestyle you've got right now. We are very blessed. That is for sure. Absolutely. That's probably a whole nother conversation. <laughs> yes, no doubt. No doubt. We'll have to have one of those and you have to tell me about those things. So anything else you want to add about open houses? No, I, you know, it, 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 they, the old school people think they're no good. They're a great opportunity because what we're talking about is you have no money. You have no, you, you're starting from scratch. And I guarantee you, if you go do the activities long enough in that, you will see a high level of success. Absolutely. So give me number three. <laughs> What's the third thing that you do? Well, I, I kind of wrap the, 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 that one into the open house, which is doing database calls for, for somebody that has all these leads sitting in there. Nice. So, so you do that at the open house. So, so you're killing two birds with one stone. And, and I have a fourth one that I wrote okay. down. We already kind of talked about that. And that is really working hard to have great partners, you know, lenders, title companies, insurance companies, you know, th th those, those partners, those key partners. And, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons that we ended up having a, a mortgage business is because we just couldn't get great partners. Yeah. Right. And so it's not about who's giving you the money that that's a part of it, but it's not every part of it. It's, it's about really getting deep with somebody that's going to work hard for you and help you grow your business. Yeah. What, what would you say if you said, um, I need to find three partners, you know, who would be the three, what industry would you look at first? Mortgage, obviously being one of the top ones. Yep. What else title. Would you look at? Mortgage title and insurance probably. Okay. And I wouldn't have three to be per, to be crystal clear. There is no value in having three in each of those. Talk you need to have your guy. Talk about that. Well, so uh, we'll, we'll just talk about the mortgage side because that's yeah. that, that's the that's the real thing of it. If if you're if you first of all, it's a really interesting dynamic: the mortgage side and the real estate side. Mm -hmm. Neither can be successful without the other yet neither trust the other. And so there was never any marketing money shared. Like I, that, that never existed until all the big CRMs came out and said, we can, we can sell a $1,500 platform um, because we can get your lender to pay for half of it. So that, that's when money came into play. And, and I was guilty of it. I'm like, you know, don't show up unless you got your wallet out. Right. I mean, like if you're not going to show it didn't matter how great they were, if they were going to call our people, like I just needed them to pay. Uh, in reality, that's that's not the right way to go about it. That's that's a part of it, but it's down the road. And so, on the real estate side, we've led with that so much. Everybody, all the mortgage people are gun shy of it, right? Yes. So, because it hasn't worked out the majority of the time, there's some that work out. And and like I said, I'm not saying that there's not a place. There is a place for that, but that's in the place where you've grown your business together and you've organically grown it. Right. Right. And so the, the value in having somebody that you know that you can get a hold of, that you know that you can trust. Look, no, no lender is going to walk in and sit down in your office and be like, guess what? We have the highest rates. We have really crappy underwriting and it takes a long time. Like nobody's going to do that. Right. So they all say, oh, we got great rates. We got great. Guess what they all have? They all have FHA, VA, USDA conventional. 
Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there's some specialty programs here or there that might apply to one deal in two years for you. Fair. Fair. So, so it, it, it's really finding somebody that you know, like, and trust so that they can know, like, and trust you. Because when you do that, you're going to, to build that relationship with them and they're going to want to help you in all sorts of ways. Yeah. Very much. Right. Very much. So I was just at a, uh, a coaching thing. I just went, I happened to be in the town where it was at. And I was like, I'm going to go check this out. I didn't know the people. So I went and, you know, one of the guys stood up on the stage. He's like, I want you to take out your phone. I want you to text your lender. Tell them you'll be home on Tuesday and you expect to meet with them on Wednesday to talk about how they're going to contribute more financially to your business. Now, Rob, you and I have never done this before, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> God. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, yep. All right. Got it. So three weeks later, I go to a mortgage conference and all they talked about was how to not give realtors money. Yeah. Yep. And I'm like, so both industries have it wrong. Right. Yeah. And we're doing all this stuff on the real estate side. And what I come to appreciate is a lot of the stuff that the mortgage side didn't even know existed. Yeah. So what, what if we were to, to get together once a week and talk about our business and what we're doing and how we're doing it and how we could partner Right. Yes. And what I need to do for me this week and what I need you to like, like really, like we, we spend all this time playing and I, I love this time of the year. Everybody's into their retreats and they're going to go to, a, you know, they're doing all this stuff by the way we're doing the same thing. Yeah. But it's, why don't you have a retreat every week? Right. Why don't you plan sure. your every week? And why don't you sit down with your, your lender? The lender's the most important. The title company's more of a receiver. You know, they, they do a great job when you, when you get them, the insurance company, same thing. But Really on the, the lending side, like having a true partnership, tell them how you're growing your business, right? I, I've talked to so many people like, I won't let my lender in my database. Well, why not? I don't trust them. Why are you using them? Yes. Wrong, wrong relationship. <laughs> because they gave you a check? Yeah. Well, how, mu how much is that check costing you? Yeah. Right? I mean, and it's just, it, it, this is unwrapping the industry that, that has been so entrenched and this is how you do it and this is the way you do it and this is why you do it and i want to be perfectly clear i'm not saying there's not a place for financial yeah there is yeah. but it's not what you lead with right and so when that lender knows the importance of hey i, I have these leads coming in this week let's get them pre-approved before the weekend let's like all of those things when that lender comes across somebody wants to buy where do you where do you reckon they're probably going to go you got it all right Yep. And so everybody complains, well, the lenders don't generate any deals, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? They're not that early in the transaction. Right. So, so how many deals have you got from your title company? None. None. How about your insurance guy? None. So why do you complain about the lender, not the title company and the transaction? Right. It's the same concept. It, the, the, it all starts at the real estate side. And I get that. Yeah. But there are deals that do happen that way. Yes, there are. Right. And if you have the, the, the deepest relationship, guess who's going to get them? You are. Well, and there's, there you go. When you said that there, they do happen that way. That is for your lending partner. That's where the partnership and the relationship comes in. It's not getting and presenting, Oh, here are three options. Pick one. Right. Yeah. Because, because that, that doesn't serve you or them. Right. How hard do you reckon they want to work if they always know that Susie's sending me to three people? And she's probably, I may not be the number one and she's not going to push me. So am I really going to catch the call on Saturday? No, no. Well, it's not serving your ultimate client together, the buyer in a highest level either. Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely. And there's no liability. No. Hey, Rob, you can use anybody you want. I have a great relationship with Susie. She's always done a great job for us. You know, I would love for you to talk to her. She tends to be able to beat stuff. If she can't, she'll tell you. Right. And that's what you tell your, your, your partner, yep. right? Because Absolutely. you have a partnership and you know what each other's doing and you know that you can trust that. Yes. And so who, who, who has had deals that were with the, the big boys that didn't close on time that are, that you can't get a hold of anybody. You got an email and like, it, it's such a farce. Yep. How is that looking out for your client's best interest? Wow. Now, listen, if you, if you, if you, you know, hold a knife to their head and say, Hey, you gotta, well, that's a little bit different. That, that could probably cross the, there could be a legality side to it, yes. right? But but if you just say, hey, there's lots of people out there, lots of great people. You got somebody that's awesome, but 
I recommend you have somebody as a second backup person. I have a great local person. They're going to take great care of you because I wouldn't use them if they didn't. And then guess what happens when you get down to the closing and things are tight? Guess who's going to stand up for you? Yep, your partner. Guess, guess who's going to say at the very beginning of the deal, hey, I just want you to know you're really fortunate to be working with Rob. He's a great realtor and he's going to take great care of you because most of the people don't know each other and so on and so forth. And, and you start building that and, and it, that's how you grow a business. But most people don't want to do that because they're afraid to lose the client. And they, so they don't like, dude, we could probably talk for six days about all this stuff because oh, gosh, yes. it, it, at the end of the day, it, it just comes down to, this is me. This is how I do business. These are the people I do business with. You're not required to do business with them. However, I do because I know, like, and trust them, and I know they're going to do a great job for you. Yeah. I've used the same home inspector for 20 years, right? Absolutely. I don't have a list of three. I don't do anything. So you can use any person you want. I've been using this person for a really long time, and they're like, well, if you trust them, I trust them. You got it. Right? And guess who's been out fixing windows when they miss something or done? That guy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He didn't disappear. So, so the value in those partnerships and the title company, you know, and, and they, the title people, you should be teaching your title people how to talk about you. Yeah. Man, you're, you've done such a great job. I'm glad we're here at the close. I know we're just not meeting you, but man, you're in such great hands with Rob. Didn't he do a great job? Yeah. And if they say anything but yes, then you get to know about it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right? And, yeah, no doubt. This, it, it's, this is what the real what is hurting the real estate industry at this point or at least the agents that are out there is absolutely we have forgotten how to do this and it's you guys it's it's not difficult no. it's just being willing to do it and to to understand that you have the most amazing opportunity i've got to see and do things in my life i could have never dreamed possible yeah. because of our real estate business absolutely Right. And, I, and I'm super thankful for it. But at the same time, it's like, this is just what it is. I'm not making this up. It's not to, you know, you, you've known me for a long time, dude. And, and you know that I always straight up like, Absolutely. How it is. Absolutely. it's my opinion. You may disagree and that's okay. And Susie may disagree and Tommy may disagree. But at the end of the day, this is how we built a business that we don't have to be here and be a part of. This is how we built a super successful mortgage business. This is how we've done all those things. It's because we serve people, we have great relationships, and the rest of it, dude, it, it, listen, if you have to sell somebody a house, if you have to walk somebody in a house and tell them which room is a kitchen, they should not be buying the house. <laughs> Spot on. You got right? it. Right? You got they, it. If, you, if they don't know that that's the kitchen, they have other things they need to take care of before they purchase a home. That is correct. Oh, man, this has been outstanding, and I want to respect your time as well. Um, we're going to have to do a couple follow-ups for this and get into some yeah. of these other things as well and, you know, do something maybe for some brokers and, and just take it some different directions. But um, you've, given, you've given us three things that are, well, a lot more than three things, but some phenomenal things. I would have zero doubt that if somebody would, were, were willing to put in the effort and do this, Heck, just one of them, then there would not be a question that in 30 days they are back on their feet and they are producing plenty to be able to feed their family. I concur 150%. Yeah. Anything you want to add in a closing statement? I, I'm sorry it wasn't some really cool techie new thing. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm glad it wasn't. <laughs> well, yeah, I've been telling everybody, like, so, so the whole industry right now is struggling for what's next. Yeah. Right. And, and I mean, everybody's banking on AI. Everybody is every company. They're all banking on AI and the, I'm beating the drum of the, the new is the old. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm and waiting, I'm still yeah. waiting for one of those companies to call and say, Hey, let's go have a cup of coffee. Yeah. And talk about your life. How are you? What are you? Yeah. How you doing? Just thinking about you. How are you doing today? I'm not calling to sell you. I just wanted to say hi. See if you're doing okay. It, it, How's Linda it, doing? It really does work <laughs> just like that. It does. It really because does. I spent 20 minutes before this talking about all those very things. That's right. You got it. You got it. Right. Well, Jason, I am truly grateful 
for you and appreciate you and what you have done and what you contribute and what you continue to do. Um, and I know that those that are going to watch this and listen to this and read this, the transcript of this in the future, um, it is pure gold and we'll be grateful as well. So thank you, sir. It's my pleasure. And hey, listen, you know, we're, we're always looking to help people, whatever we can do. You know, I'm, I'm available. You can get a hold of me. You call my office and they get a hold of me if you have any questions or whatever. If we can ever help you with your mortgage business, you know, we got to, we built our mortgage business from the, from the realtor's perspective. We were just smacking out of the park. Our loan officers are asking these realtors questions like, how did you know to ask me that? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so it, you know, if we could ever help anybody from that standpoint, that's not a shameless plug. It's just, there's a lot of, there's a lot of need in our industry to help people. With their there is. And what I'll do is I'll make sure to put a couple of links in the, uh, in the write up the transcript and, and this as well so that they can reach out to you if they need to. Yeah. Sounds great, man. Appreciate you your time, brother. You got it. Jason Shimpaw, thank you for a great interview. Truly appreciated. I'm sure that all realtors in our audience have a much clearer understanding of succeeding in real estate, how to get back on your feet after 30 days if you've suddenly lost it all. And uh, again, I'm Robert Tucker. Thanks for joining us on Real Estate Sales Secrets. You guys make it a great day.